Hello and welcome to verdict term. This is Kanchan and today I am going to explain to you a few interesting judgments of this week from the Supreme Court. A two-judge bench of Justice J.K. Maheshwari and Justice K.V. Vishwanathan held that it is lucent that the respondent number one did not set out any grounds to declare Rule 4b of the rules as ultra wires. No such relief was even prayed for the writ petition. The respondent number one in the writ petition merely sought a writ in the nature of seritory to set aside the order of the CAT. Therefore, in the given facts, there was no occasion for the High Court to declare Rule 4b as ultra wires. At the time of filing the original application before the CAT, the respondent number one was working as a principal system analyst, scientist D, in the National Informatics Center, Kattak. A promotion policy known as Flexible Complementing Scheme, FCS, was introduced based on the fifth pay commission recommendations. In the course of the original application, the Ministry of Information Technology introduced rules for in st two promotion of scientific and technical group A posts. Rule 4 of these rules out Outlined an assessment procedure involving screening and interviews for promotion. The respondent number one was eligible for the promotion to the post of scientist E after four years of service as scientist D. Despite being called for interview in December 1999 and December 2000, she was not promoted, while her juniors were. The respondent number one submitted representations requesting reconsiderations of her case, but that was rejected. The CAT disposed of the original application directing the department to inform the respondent number one why she was not promoted and suggesting clarity in the promotion guidelines. The order of the High Court was challenged in this appeal primarily on the grounds that the wires of Rule 4b was declared without proper pleading and relief. The Supreme Court set aside the High Court's declaration of Rule 4b as ultra wires, and respondent number one's claim regarding her promotion was also not considered as it did not arise with the validity of Rule 4b. A two-judge bench of Justice Bela M. Trivedi and Justice Dipankar Datta observed it may be noted that even in a case where the final report of the police under section 173 is accepted and the accused persons are discharged, the magistrate has the power to take into cognizance of the offence on a complaint or a protest petition on the same or similar allegations even after the acceptance of the final report. The appellant had filed an FIR alleging that the respondents accused had attacked him and his family with sharp-edged weapons resulting in serious injuries to his family members. The FIR was registered under various sections of the IPC. After the investigation was completed, a final report was submitted. Displeased with the final report, the appellant complainant filed a protest petition which was subsequently registered as a complaint case. The CGM issued summons to the respondent accused after recording statements from the complainant and other witnesses. The respondent accused then filed an application under Section 482 in the High Court challenging the order issued. They sought an amendment to this application, requesting to set aside the order. The High Court granted the amendment and on the following day set aside the orders, directing the CGM to reconsider the protest petition. The High Court's observation in its order were found to be erroneous by the appellant and the Supreme Court, clarified that the magistrate had three options upon receiving a police report under Section 173 CRPC. First one was to drop the action if there is insufficient ground, second to take cognizance based on the police report and issue process, or third to take cognizance based on the original complaint and proceed under Section 200 CRPC. The court said that the magistrate's discretion is not restricted and even if the final report is accepted and accused persons are discharged, the magistrate can take cognizance of a complaint on similar allegations. The court noted that in this case, the CGM has properly exercised its discretion by rejecting the final report and accepting the protest petition and later issuing summons after recording statements. The High Court's interference with these orders was deemed improper. Therefore, the Supreme Court allowed the appeal and quashed the High Court's order and directed the concerned CGM to proceed with the complaint case in accordance with the law. The bench comprising Justice C.T. Ravi Kumar and Justice Sanjay Kumar observed applying this principle given in Gurupat Khandappa Magdam versus Hirabai Khandappa Magdam and others, the share of Farnam would first have to be determined as on the date of his death. He seemed to have had two brothers would have been entitled to a one-third share in the co-parsonary properties if a partition has been effected before his death. 
In fact, such a partition was actually effected in 1964 and Fanarum's one third share was allotted to his only son Vishal. However, Vishal was a co-partner in his own right in a separate co-partition with his father and would be entitled to a share in the co-partition property by both. The case centered on the inheritance of a Miktashara co-partition property that belonged to the Faranam Sahu. Faranam had two wives and several children. After his passing, a partition was done and Kesar Bai, Faranam's daughter from his first wife was given a one third share in the co-partition property. However, one of Faranam's son Vishal disagreed with Kesar Bai's request for further partition and allocating her share. Kesar Bai then filed a partition suit which the trial court ruled in a favor granting her a one third share in the agricultural land to houses, properties and men's in profits. Vishal and K Chawai appealed this decision but lost in the appeal and court. They appealed to the high court which partially allowed the appeal reducing Kesar Bai's share to 1/6. The legal representatives of Kesar Bai were dissatisfied with the order and filed a civil appeal before the Supreme Court challenging the decision of the high court. The court observed that section 8 of the HSA pertains to interstate succession in the case of males. It outlines the sequence in which the property will be passed down to the heirs. The court asserted that class 1 heirs have the highest priority followed by class 2 heirs, agnates and lastly the co-agnates. The two judge bench of Justice S Ravindra Bhatt and Justice Arvind Kumar held in the present case although the OCI card relied upon by the petitioner on 4 8 the fact that she was in fact issued the OCI registration card first on 2 11 2015 in such circumstances the petitioner eligibility to claim the benefit of an OCI card holder in terms of the ruling in Anushka is undeniable The rejection of her candidature at this stage that is on 19 6 is not supported in law. The All India Institute of Medical Science aims the nodal agency for the NEET test examination call for application from eligible candidates by publishing a prospectus for NEET process and the petitioner applied. She was an OCI card holder and a US national. The prospectus published by the respondent stipulated the eligibility conditions and an addition for foreign nationals no objection certificate was also deemed essential which was to be issued by Ministry of External Affairs the government of India. The petitioner secured 96.73 having an overall rank of 1902 and the merit list also recognized her in OCI category. She was thereafter informed that she would be treated as a foreign national as she disclosed her status to be an OCI candidate and hence was allowed a pediatrics discipline in some aims however suddenly after some days she was informed that she is no longer be treated as an OCI candidate and would be considered in the category of indian national being aggrieved by this she was before the court the court noted that the petitioner is consequently directed to be considered in the remaining counseling rounds by the aims and all participating institutions for pg medical seats it is clarified that the consideration would be regarding seats that are unfulfilled on the date of this judgment whether reserved for sc st obc or other categories and such as specially earmarked for bhutanese candidates if any they can be fulfilled by other candidates like her furthermore this facility should be open to the petitioner as well as the other candidates based upon the available record of those issued oci cards prior to 4 3 and those can participate in such counseling rounds having regard to their performance in the neat test and their ranking added the court accordingly the apex court allowed the red petition thank you and keep watching verdictum the dictum of truth Subscribe to our channel and download the Verdictum app on iOS and Android to keep yourself updated with the latest legal developments.